Good Monday morning. A new week has begun. And yeah, I hope you are as excited for this week as I am. I don't know why. I'm just, I love a fresh start. So here we go. Today, I am wearing, I'm about to put these on. I just took them out of the dryer. These socks. These cute little guys. These are the pair I made myself for Christmas. These are out of Regia sock yarn. Yesterday, I felt a really like wild streak in myself and I decided that I was gonna wash all of the socks that needed washed in the washer and dryer. I didn't know how it was gonna turn out. Um, I heard the crazy sock lady say once that she does that and it works out fine, so I thought, well, why not me? And that's what we did. And in these socks, everything's fine. <laughs> so today I thought it would be appropriate for me to wear my my Pappy's Ohio State Buckeyes sweatshirt that I got from him. He played football for Ohio State for Woody Hayes and he passed away a couple years ago. And um, I thought it was just, you know, fitting being that yesterday was a Super Bowl and I had no idea. Um, I'm not like super into sports or anything, so I don't follow all of that, but everyone at work was like super into it. Everybody was talking about Taylor Swift. Everybody's talking about Usher. And I was like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. In fact, it was so bad. I was in my own little world so much so that one of my coworkers emailed me and I said, yeah, he emailed me about something. I said, yeah, totally fine. Let's chat tomorrow. He, his reply was, yes, back to SB prep. I was like, I had no clue what SB meant. I started Googling what does SB mean, and Google told me it meant somebody. And I knew that that couldn't be right because back to somebody prep, that makes no sense. And I know this particular person is smarter than to say back to somebody prep. So I realized this morning that he meant back to Super Bowl prep. So look, I'm just glad that I've eventually figured it out okay all right let's chat real quick about where i landed last night on brooks's lucky dog sweater ooh, 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 ooh. this is the belly this is the back belly back i have divided the back and the belly so the belly stitches are now on hold and I am working on the back. So right now I'm just working flat, going back and forth along this um, row of stitches. Uh, we're coming along quite nicely. I'm fully confident that I am going to finish this sweater this week. Brooks, you know, he needs to be warm. We woke up to snow this morning and Otto, I put his sweater on him and took him outside. I convinced him to come into the snow with me so that I could take a picture of him. What a sweetheart. And then we came right back inside because he was too cold. But anyways, yeah, Brooks needs his sweater pronto. The next issue is, um, you know, I had thought about making a traveler cowl, thought about making the shell. I looked at the shell and it is fingering weight. And I just, mm, I don't know that I want to knit a garment out of fingering weight yarn. The sweater I knit for my son, the flax light that was out of fingering weight yarn, took me a year. Not doing it. Um, so I really want to just knit what I love and I really freaking love that hoodie. Knit Picks has me coming back again and again and again and again. And the yarn is just so I need to figure out what color I'm thinking it's gonna be 
one of the shades of green. They have a few different shades in the wool of the Andy Sport. There's like a, there's a couple light greens and then there's a couple darker greens. I think I'm going to go with a lighter. Um, but we'll see. I'll update you whenever I have a chance to go yarn shopping online later today. Um, but anyways, time to get to work. All right, it's lunchtime, so <clears throat> we're going to do a little yarn shopping. Okay, so this is the yarn that I used for the Traveler hoodie, this guy right here. Wool of the Andes Sport from Knit Picks. Now, I have some very exciting news. I've been a Knit Picks affiliate since the very beginning of January, and I had no idea. So, I'm just now figuring that out and I'm super stoked about it. Um, so if you do want to use my links at no extra cost to you, uh, yeah, I get a little bit of a kickback. This is the yarn that I use for the traveler sweaters. I use this for both of my, I use this both on my crew neck version and my hoodie. If you're interested in that video or blog post, I will have it all linked. The first one I made was in this colorway, Dove Heather. This is the one that I used um, for the crew neck version. I used 12 skeins of this. And they're only $3.99 a skein, so I feel like that was pretty, pretty sweet. The hoodie version I made was this colorway, Holly Berry. I used 13 of those for the hoodie and I'm up here looking at the greens so this green Aurora Heather, Heather there's that one it's not even available right now actually it's not available until the very tail end of April there's this forest Heather there's this grass. Green tea heather, like a muted light green. And then pompous heather. It's an olive green color that has a slight vintage tone. So originally, I was thinking this one, this colorway, Pompous Heather, or possibly Green Tea Heather. But I landed on grass. So I just ordered 14 skeins of this bad boy. And I'm really excited to be making another hoodie. I don't know what it is about this pattern. It is just, I, I love knitting it and I love wearing it. So we're going to make another one. Somebody stop me. I just need to make more sweaters. We need all of the hoodies. Okay. So that's what I did on my little um, lunch break that I just took. And it's time for coffee. I don't know how many like milligrams of caffeine per day are recommended, but it's possible that I'm way over that. It's very possible. And I don't know why I do it either because I'm already hyper and wired constantly. Um, but I still just keep feeding my body and my mind craziness. I. Why are we doing this, Holly? I don't know. This morning, now this is not just your regular old small coffee cup. This coffee cup holds a lot, okay? So I had one of these when I woke up at 4.30 to start working. And then I was feeling really, I was like wired. So it was time to work out and 
So I, we would just have some pre-workout. So I had C4. <laughs> and then I worked out. And when I had that C4, man, I was fizzing. Fizzing. But I had a Coke Zero, so that had caffeine in it. The C4 has a shit ton of caffeine in it. Um, therefore, fizzing. And now I'm having another giant cup of coffee. Now, I will tell you, I have had one and a half things of water so far today. So, um, you know, if this is my last cup of coffee for the day and the rest of the day I just drink water, I feel like things have balanced out and we'll be good. Time to do some knitting. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are, you know, into true crime or whatever you want to call it, or current <clears throat> current trials that are going on right now, but I have been kind of watching, listening to the, the Jennifer Crumbly trial that is currently going on right now in Michigan, I, be, I think. Um, and Jennifer Crumbly is the mother of Ethan. Ethan was a school shooter and he, he did some really, really terrible things. And um, this is like the first time in American history that parents have been, um, been tried for like connection to their child's crime of being a school shooter. Really interesting to me, um, just kind of trying to figure out what I think about the entire situation. If I think that the parents should be held responsible, um, stuff like that. Do you, do you guys watch this stuff? Are you interested in stuff like this? Because like I could sit here and talk about it all day. And it, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get back to watching this footage of the trial on YouTube and knit some more. Tuesday. I've been up since 4.30. I worked for a couple hours, got my workout in, and then took a shower, and now we're here. I did not knit that much yesterday. Definitely not nearly as much as I was thinking I would or hoping I would, but um, I literally just completed a few rounds and could not stay awake any longer. Um, 
So I'm hoping today if I get a good chunk of work done, I'll be able to knit some. We'll see. I don't know. Oh my God. I just got back. This, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Hello. I just got back a little bit ago, worked for a little bit. My makeup is really jacked up, but I had a little package in the mail from Knit Picks. And I have some seriously bright colored yarn to show you. So this is all palette. This is a very like bright pink. And the color is called Cosmopolitan. Ooh. Oh, this is really pretty. Wow. That is so weird. It looks like dark green. That's so weird. But this is like a super bright green. I don't know why it's picking up like that. This is almost like a neon green. It's called Limeade Heather. Cayenne. This bright, bright orange. What am I going to do with these? Probably muscle bro hats. Yup. I will be having some bright hats to wear soon. I have a business trip coming up. And so I have really been wanting to cast on a muscle bro hat so that I can take it with me and knit if I have a second there. So yeah, this is probably going to be the last time that I check in tonight. I'm starting to get tired, but there's still so much that I want to do. So I guess that means it's time to have some coffee. Just kidding. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope your day is filled with love and all of the mushy, mushy things. Um, we actually celebrated last night and we had Qdoba. It was so good. I'm wearing my half and half triangles wrap and these socks they are a free pattern on my website if you're interested i will link it below these are called the new beginnings shorty socks Pew! i'm wearing my pickle wreck shirt just look at his face <laughs> yesterday i was able to knit some in the evening when i finished work i think i finally shut down my computer at like 7 30. So the pattern has you knit some of the back flat, like you put the chest, these chest stitches on hold, the belly stitches on hold, you knit some of the back, you put that on hold, you knit the chest, I think, am I getting this right? Okay, yeah, I am right. So you you divide the chest, this ribbed portion is the chest and the back. You knit the back, back and forth and back and forth. And then you put those stitches on hold and then you <clears throat> knit the chest back and forth, back and forth in this ribbing pattern. And then you join them back together. And when you join them back together, it automatically makes these holes for the arms and sleeves. So perfect. Join the chest in the back and then you begin the yoke portion. And then you do the like collar around the neck and then you bind off. And the only thing I'll have left to do is um the sleeves and those are <clears throat> on on my other sweater that i knit uh that literally took me maybe an hour to knit both of the sleeves and bind off everything and then i weaved everything in and put the sweater on brooks but then it didn't fit so this is brooks the sweater um and the other sweater is autos i am hoping to get the yoke done today that's what I'm that's what I'm banking on. 
Um, there's some short rows in there, which are pretty simple to do. And then all I will have left is the collar and the sleeves and weaving in my ends. So I'm super stoked to be about getting this done. And I'm still only on my second skein of yarn. And I have knit a bunch. I have a crochet project currently going on. Um, it's in a basket in the other room. And it is the temperature blanket. It's already started. Um, but my plan was to... Oh my dear God, I'm just gonna show it to you. Okay, this is the basket that my temperature blanket is currently living in. So what I did was I picked a year. I I know a lot of people when they're knitting temperature blankets, or not knitting, I guess you can knit or crochet them, but when they're crocheting, I think that's mostly how people do it. Um, they like will do one row each day of the year, and then at the very end of the year, they will have a giant blanket. I decided to do something a little different. I'm going back in time to the year of 2008 from the date that my husband and I got married for our whole first year of marriage. I saw that idea and I thought it was so sweet and would make a really good keepsake. I found a website. I'm gonna have to see if I can find it again. But there was a website that I got on. You can put in any like um, date range and location and it will pull up all of the, the, the highs, the lows, the average temperatures for the weather that was on any, on the, that given time period. And you can export things to a spreadsheet and print it all out. So that's what I did. I put all of that information in here. I went through and I decided what um, temperature range, whoa, what temperature ranges I wanted to do. This is the collar palette that I chose. All of this yarn is from Hobby Lobby. It's the I Love This Yarn. And so I have Burnt Pumpkin, Sun Gold, Latte, Rosy Cheeks, Buttercup, Linen, Dark Country Blue, Antique Teal, Spa and soft blue. I just went to Hobby Lobby and I got one of each of those skeins. This is a crochet hook I was using. It's a, it's a clover, pretty sure it's a clover. Yeah, clover size H 5.0 millimeter hook. Um, and I put all of my beautiful yarn in here. So this is where it's sitting and uh, I started on my, I'll link this down below in Ravelry, um, but this, I mean, it's, she's pretty long. My goal is, if, is for it to be a bedspread. It's gonna fit a queen size bed. Um, and I wanted to make sure it was big enough to, you know, cover the bed and everything. I've been thinking about picking that back up and working on that some, but I have really been enjoying this monogamous knitting life because I feel like I make so much progress on a project when I'm like, that's the only thing that I've got going on. So whenever I sit down to knit, I know exactly what I'm working on and I don't have to think like, what do I feel like working on? Um, which is, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that too, but I feel like I get so much done when I am just knitting on one thing at a time. I hope you have an amazing day and I will check in with you later. Hello, hello, hello. It is now Thursday. I am wearing my daydream cow. What is this? This is a free pattern that you can find on my website. It is just two-stranded collar work. It's my first ever collar work cowl. And I used Spin Cycle yarn and Wool of the Andes Sport. So if you are interested in a free cowl pattern, you can hop over to my website and grab that. 
Um, so a bit of a an update on Brooks's dog sweater. We've got issues. <laughs> um, there is something off. And I'm not sure exactly what is happening, but I am right now I am on the short rows. Something is not right. And I I ran into an issue at this point with the first one that I made that ended up being Otto's sweater. And I I worked it out somehow. I didn't write it down and I thought to myself like, oh yeah, I'll just remember, you know, for the next sweater what I did and everything will be fine again. And that has not happened this time. I can tell you the exact part in the pattern that just is something is not right. And it is in the yoke portion. The, the beginning of the yoke. There's something off there. I should probably reach out to the um, the designer or even look at the, see if anybody has put like some notes or something on Ravelry under the pattern about this particular problem. Um, actually, let's do that. So I'm on the Ravelry website. And these are the comments for the Lucky Dog sweater. So, right here is the comment about the errata. This was over three years ago. And then down here, where was it? Right here. Two years ago, over two years ago. I really wanted this to work. I'm very disappointed with the clarity of the instructions for the extra, extra small yoke. There are multiple markers and a new marker is added in the yoke section, which is easy to miss. I attempted the extra, extra small twice. I'm an experienced knitter. I suspect there may be at least one mistake in the yoke instructions related to marker placement. And that is exactly where my issue is. I don't see where the instructions to mit. I kept thinking to myself, like, where is this marker? And because the instructions tell you to knit to the next marker, but I was like, well, the next marker is like a lot further than what these instructor instructions are trying to say, because we're getting to the ribbing before the instructions, like it just didn't add up. It does not add up. I'm also just beginning the yoke and I'm very confused with the marker placement in the first decrease row after attempting multiple times. Should there be four markers? Yes. And if so, where should the fourth marker be? So confused about this yoke. Throughout the pattern, I've added three markers. That's exactly where I was. There are three markers. There's two that have markers on each side of where the ribbing is on the along the belly that divide the, the just straight stock, stockinette. Let me show you. Let's see. So... Let me go back here. Okay, so this pink marker is what separates the belly ribbing from the straight stockinette of the back. And the same thing over here. So this is my second marker, which separates stockinette from the belly portion ribbing okay and then we had added those are the only two markers we had added until we met back up to to work in the round um after knitting the chest in the back and that is where we added this third marker which is 
our beginning of round marker. So there should only be three markers, but the pattern is saying, like it's reading like there should be four markers. Yeah, so this is, I can see the frustration here, thinking if I start over and I follow these instructions, all will be fine. I honestly have no clue how I made the first one work. No clue at all. Now that we've looked at that, I'm gonna bookmark this so that I can come back to it. I think what I'm gonna do is this. I think I'm gonna give this one more try um, because I did knit it for auto. So I know I can do it. It's not like a question of like, I'm just, I don't feel like I should just throw in the towel. I probably would if this happened on that first sweater, but since I've already knit one of them, um, I feel like it would be kind of silly to just give up right here. And this is like a pretty quick knit for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel this thing and get started on a new one. So here we go. Okay. I thought I was recording this whole time, but I wasn't. So what has happened is I started unraveling this thing and I quickly realized that I was going to be okay to separate the back and the chest and then be able to continue moving forward. So that's what I've got going on here. I put the back stitches on hold on some spare fingering weight yarn and I just used my little tapestry needle and I threaded it through all of these stitches for the back and tied it off so they won't come undone. So they're on hold again. And now I just put my needles back on these chest stitches. And I think I only unraveled like maybe two or three rows of the chest. So um, I'm not sure exactly what I'll do to to figure that out, or I might even just eyeball it. But I think we're going to be all right. Oh, we dropped a stitch here. I need to go get my crochet hook. Having a crochet hook laying around makes picking up a dropped stitch easy so this is a purl stitch well this is going to be the knit side so I am just going to bring those ladders through using my crochet hook it's back where it's supposed to be and then slip it back onto my left hand needle. If you're interested in a more like close up in depth way of how I go about doing that, just let me know. And we are almost good to go here. I think on like a fingering weight project, I would never like, especially like a sweater or something. There's another dropped stitch. I'm gonna grab that. Especially on a fingering weight project where the yarn is like um, a lot lighter, therefore like thinner, right? it would really concern me to have to unravel, but I think because this yarn is a heavier weight, it's worsted weight, <clears throat> it made it a lot more simple to unravel, 
but yeah, generally, like, if I have an issue in a pattern, I will just unravel because I... feel like I mean I will unravel the entire thing because it seems like it's just easier for me to just completely start over than to risk having to go back through and figure out where I went wrong and if I missed picking up stitches and all this other stuff or where I am in the pattern mm -hmm. especially if it's a complicated pattern um that was really long-winded but um yeah okay so Apparently we're all right. We are all right now. I think what I'm going to do is just go do a few more rows here and then pick up on the pattern where it merges the chest and the back of the sweater. And I think we'll be okay. And then I am going to go back to this. I bookmarked this page. This comment here is going to be what I am going to use <laughs> to do the yoke. And I think then we will be good to go. Okay, so I think that's all for right now. I am going to continue working on this this evening and see if we can get some more of it done. I really want to get this sweater off my needles and move on. So, let's get it done. Good morning, it is Friday. I'm so happy it's Friday. Um, and I am, I've got this cold Coke Zero going here, so I had to put on my Align. What's the matter? Do you want outside? These are the alignment. I can't remember now if the pattern actually calls for sock yarn, but that's what I use. This is Knit Pick Stroll in the colorway Treasure. There's not a right and a left, which is what I love about this. Um, you just put them on, and I love the way they look. Super simple to knit. But yeah. Um, they're keeping my hands warm while I am holding my coke. Okay, I have really exciting news. I, I we are back on track with Brooks's sweater and we got this thing going. I'm almost done with it. I have like oh, I don't know, almost 40 rounds or something like that left to go on the collar. I'm on my third skein of yarn the the little directions that trish knits put up on the comment section of the pattern on ravelry were incredibly helpful um and got me through so thank you trish knit here she is this is the back it's pretty long and the front so the armholes are here. These here are the decreases. And now I'm just working in a ribbing pattern to do the collar portion. Then I bind off. Then I do the sleeves. They're like itty bitty sleeves. They don't take much time at all. Do the sleeves and then weave in my ends and we're done. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, I have been grinding like crazy with work stuff to prep for a meeting coming up. Um, and we are like, my team is so awesome that we're almost done and we are like right on schedule. So that's amazing. Um, but I do have some work I need to get done today and then I can spend some time knitting. Hopefully this sucker, those bitches about to be finished. She about to be done. Um,
morning good morning it is now saturday i actually finished brooks's sweater last night waved in all the ends and then i actually threw his sweater and auto sweater into the washer on a cold delicate cycle with just regular um, laundry detergent put it in the put them in the dryer on low heat and they turned out perfectly I'll put some footage in here and some pictures of the boys wearing their sweaters and uh, yeah I'll show you the difference too of the large which is what I knit auto and then the blue sweater is Brooks's that is the extra large version of the pattern um, and yeah so I followed Trish knit's comment on Ravelry like we talked about to figure out the yoke portion that was really confusing and I did find that while it's not marked clearly in the pattern, there is a, a PM or place marker on round one of the yoke. So that is where that fourth marker comes in. If you're not really paying attention to it, you'll miss it. And that is exactly what happened with me and a lot of other people, I guess. So I'm not certain that that that's like an actual flaw in the pattern like it's not misprinted or anything it's just not um it could use like you know some better markings so that you're aware of that marker being placed there because it comes out of nowhere and like i said if you just are just going about your business and not really paying attention um it's really easy to miss and then I also saw in one of the comments that on short row two of the yoke, um, somebody had said that there's a portion there that it says like knit two, purl two twice, and that they thought it was supposed to say purl two, knit two twice. When I was knitting it, I found that the pattern stating knit two, purl two twice was in fact correct. So that's what it was for me i am really happy with how the sweaters both turned out um, i'm glad that i was able to unravel that bit on brooks's sweater and uh, pick back up where i left off that was uh something new that i was able to do i didn't think that that was going to happen for me i thought i was going to have to unravel the entire thing and start over again but I was able to pick up and figure that that out. Um, so thank goodness for Ravelry and those comment sections where people post comments about patterns. That was super helpful for being able to complete Brooks's sweater. And I think I got it done. Let's see. Let me pull up my Ravelry. So I started his sweater on February 9th and completed it February 16th. Those, so that was seven days. It was exactly a week. So that's pretty cool. And that was the largest size of the sweater. So pretty stoked about that. Um, all of the pattern notations and everything pictures, more pictures, all of that stuff, information about my yarn choice, the needle size I used, all of that good stuff. If I didn't already say it at the beginning of this video, um, you can always go to the description box below and I will have everything listed out, all of the links to my Ravelry project pages, and you'll be able to find all of the information over there. So yeah, I'm really stoked that I was able to complete this project in a week. Now both of my boys have sweaters and they're really cute. So thank you so much for hanging out with me to knit these dog sweaters and I will see you in the next one.